as a ooh, that is a Kwangnong special. Do it. Yeah, I kind of love it. Yeah. Shove Smolder underneath his turret. Don't allow him to stack. And when he does hit 225, you heal a bunch of the damage. You just heal that burns all you. of it. Yeah, you got a bunch of shields, healing, sustain. I think it's great in this case. Especially when you're already looking at two very like disengagey kind of scaly picks. Is oh Mouth yes. Fight. Yes. Do it, Rask. He does it again. Rock solid. It yeah. is. It is <laughs> rock solid. Who kills Malphite? Bulldog, late game, if he doesn't get ulted. Pretty strong as well. But let's find out what happens as we hop into the rift for game number one with this Chronicler guy. Uh, Bull and Andil, they're going to get in there and make their presence felt. Uh, the Smolder in this lane, essentially just he goes fleet and he tries to stay alive. Rascal. Yeah, might as well. Sunfire so that he does have a semblance of damage towards Dudu and then just pick up a bit of both, a bit of MR. He, he will actually become a really big problem. Like, I imagine Bull will be looking as a... But, uh, this is ridiculous. He's, he's, he's prepared. <laughs> We're just zooming in on the Christmas <laughs> coffee mugs. Yeah, he's, he's prepared Because there's no gaming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any second now. Nothing else is happening in the game. I mean, Derex is trying oh. to set up for this one. Action! I, I started this action somehow. So powerful. Here comes a couple of TPs. And Quantum Freaks are very out of position. Andil is basically just dead. His first blood goes to the Xin Zhao, and now Cuz is also in a bunch of hurt. So we do have Dudu in behind here. We do have Bulldog as well, trying to just poke some damage down, but the W will get Dudu out of dodge. Nice little stun does come in from the root from Bull, and the rest of them will get out. But a nice conversion here from DRX on the double teleport. No longer relaxing is DRX. Fortunately, also freeing us from that conversation. Double TP invested from both teams but because it's DRX that have the deep Krog Ward. They're able to get the win. They do give up a lot for this, though, and hopefully they get a little bit more out of this. Yeah, so Bull walked in range of the Karma, and so did Dudu. So they're both dead, okay? I don't really know why they were so far down the lane in that position, but definitely a big mistake that DRX immediately capitalized on. Yep. That's yeah. the end of it as bot lane. Yeah, he's dead again. That is Bull by himself. Sponge easily going to take that one up. They also get the turret in bottom lane and DRX. Oh, to action across. Oh, oh that oh, is that is not uh, allowed. No. You're playing towards the top side of the map, my guy. You're taking Harold. Teddy is also sitting at 137. So actually building up the stacks now. Slowly getting some Myers Rascal might be in trouble. Yeah, no turret is going to be an issue. He doesn't quite have his ult. He's about to get it back. As ult's over the wall, and now they're going to turn it onto Andil. It's a free kill for them. As the ult comes oh. in through the part as well. Plena going to save the life of his teammate. Because it's in quite a bit of uh, danger here at this point as well. They want to give this kill over to Teddy, as they won't quite be able to, but it's still another DRX win. So, yeah would be a good idea. Uh, we got a big zoom out here. We got TP right into the mid lane. Dudu tanky in his own right. Just gonna get that knock up on the Rascals. Both teams vying for position around this first Mountain Drake. Seems like Quantum Freaks don't want to give it up and DRX do not want to let them have even one. Bulldog trying to do as much poking. Poke is landing. Yeah. I mean, in terms of the poke war, it is going to be kind of karma against you know, Senna, Seraphine, and Huey, of course. The biggest one as Aru comes down on a Rascal. They almost got through his shield there, as now the Huey ultimate going to be utilized onto him. They're throwing everything into the mouth fight. He's just going to ult away. And yes, they did chunk down Rascal. Is it going to pay off, though? As the chase comes in, that's a nice knock on a sponge. He will be forced to Crescent Guard to survive. And you know what? They have created enough space. They have chunked enough health bars to now take this Mountain Drake. Although... Derex thinking about the Baron. I don't think you can really do it here, especially without Teddy. It's very innocent down there. No big deal. Just a very scary mountain right below them. There it is, and he flashed! Oh, he is so dead. The timing is so perfect as well as the shields and the heals, they come out. But it just doesn't matter. A lot of AoE damage comes in, but Redemption utilized here from the side of DRX as now Rascal gets pulled over. Can they actually kill the Malphite is the question. Will I be correct? Can Dudu do it? No, he will not. As Teddy, he's getting in range. He's got 225. He flaps forward. He is so low. But he just does not care as he still has the flash and he will push Quantum Freaks away. That is a necessity. Yeah. 
So they're gonna get one Q, couple Qs out of Teddy. So he slowly does burn it down. No, so oh, Bulldog. Yeah, I mean, they know this is happening. They're just looking for the engage. He does get into that back line, but where is the follow-up? He almost kills him alone, and he is going to kill Octo. Look at his health bar. This is ridiculous. Nobody can kill the Malphite. And our question doesn't seem to be answered by the Quantum Freaks. They don't have a way to kill the Malphite, as he literally 1v5 ults into the back line, and now they're even going to kill the Cassante. Down goes Dudu. DRX take two kills, and that should be a much easier Baron this time. Sometimes complex problems have simple solutions. You see Sen on the enemy team, you see a Seraphine, what do you do? You pick one of the oldest champions in the book. Press it. <laughs> It'll be okay, right? Yeah, a uh, double flash, just like that. And now they don't have their flash for when the Malphite decides to ult. And DRX is calm, especially from ahead. It's, it's unbreakable. They will have to... It's unstoppable! They will have to massively overstep. This one's just like, okay, cool story, bro. Right. How, uh, how low do you think Rascal's gonna get? I'm gonna say 80% of his health bar will, will stay up, as he's gonna ult underneath the turret, and yeah, he gets pulled back. They got him below 80% just a bit, and you know what? This is taking Ooh. a very long time, and they killed him! They actually killed Rascal! Because now the knockup does not land, uh -oh. and so the kiting does come in from the side of DRX as they decide to finally fight this one. Some very nice poke from the side of Bulldog is hitting that back line. And you see that uh, it's getting pretty dicey, actually, in these fights without the Malphite. Rascal, perfect on the timing in the previous one, messes it up here, which allows Bull to get an ultimate off. Uh-oh. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's a Cassante. Oh, he's just dead. Okay, well, Cuz is out. But now we've got Dudu behind enemy lines. Bleda trying to slow him down. Teddy! As possible. And Teddy's just going forward. He's taking the game into his own hands. And he takes out three with the executions. Bulldog is TPing out of this fight, actually. And Sponge is not going to catch him. Looks like Dudu, he might be here for a very long time. And, uh... The <laughs> Teddy TP! Yeah, he's like, by the way, that's my kill. Uh, nobody take it. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna press my Q. And, yeah. Well, it's a very magical journey back to the fountain. Here. Yeah. And, uh, by the way, Bull is still not building any magic penetration or any health burn. So... <laughs> Teddy's, Teddy's Qs are, are, uh, are a problem. Yeah. Uh, they they are, they're getting even more powerful. He's above 400 stacks at this point. Ult comes in. They're just trying to get in onto the first target, but Cuz is so tanky as well with all the healing and shielding. Will it matter is really the question. This is just like a massive death ball for both sides. And you know what? They can't kill Cuz. And look at this. Teddy Today. get caught on the right side. The shutdown goes to Andil, and Quantum Freaks are right back in the game. And they're yeah. not done with this fight either. It looks like Dudu on the chase. I don't think you really need to. You've killed the jungler. Uh -oh. Just take the Baron. DRX. Not like this. Not like this! DRX and not relaxed. You will not kill him. Just it's play. It's not going to happen. Play around Teddy and it's free. Just make sure that Teddy can Q. That's the most important part. So <laughs> That's all you need. Yeah. Um, Just keep him safe. So these fights, they take quite a while, but now Teddy, he's going to flap on in. The knockup does go down as now Mom is going to get pretty angry. Hits the entirety of that back line as Sponge is staying alive. But Rascal, he's getting pretty low as the Q lands, but it doesn't matter. The healing and the shielding is just out of control. Cuz going to go in. He doesn't have his back line with him, though. He's going to get executed. This game is getting pretty nasty. See at this point as now Dudu is gonna reconsider going in on this one. Bulldog does TP as fight. Not gonna happen as they do not have cuz. But uh, now on the chase here is DRX. Gotta be careful. Still Q's are landing. And yeah, they're gonna just back off of this one. It seems like Teddy just trying to escort them out here, but Quantum Freaks. Very Ooh. cautious about going in on this little dragon. You still have Baron. One mistake from either team here. Oh, Teddy. Oh, he's going in. He's looking for more. He's got 450 stacks, and he is hitting like a truck at this point. They are burning so quickly. But again, Quantum Freaks just mean that much. As long as Bull can keep pressing W. You gotta be careful not to stand behind these minions, too, because the AoE that comes in, there's the ult. It will be totally avoided. Nobody gets hit by the Tempered Fate, and now Doo Doo. Trying to threaten it, and he nearly gets his Senna killed. His ult in the back line, and Adil is just 100 to zero. The execution comes out, 
And now caught the Freakster just on the run. The engage comes in from Sponge as they ult in on the bull, and he gets executed as well. Trying to move in for the Penta is Teddy. He just does insane amounts of damage at this point in time. And they're not quite going to end the game. It looks like they need a wave. Although it is coming in now. Get out of there. Okay, they are getting out of there. I personally would love it if they t took the dragon. <laughs> Who can TP over? Oh, DRX. Okay. They're going to try to beat it. And doo doo. Because right here in mid, they have no idea, but they're going to be able to scout it because it's full of bear. They will go for it. Both these teams do want to make a fight for the Baron. TP is coming in already from Rascal behind them. Sponge is there. Sponge on the back. Rascal! Line. There it is. The ult catches the back line perfectly. They get the Senna down, and Bull might follow pretty nicely. But Dudu, he's on top of Teddy, who is going to flap over the wall, just trying desperately to take out the little baby dragon. It's not quite going to work, though. It's because he's ulting in. They're so desperate to kill this little dragon. But I don't think it's going to happen. Cuz gets executed, and there is the TP. And they might just be able to get it done. Plata trying to stop the back, and that he will. And that might just be it. If Yehu can end this alone, and he's got some support as well. TP comes in, and they might just do it. And with this, Breon not mathematically eliminated, no matter the outcome of the series, and DRX go up 1-0, keeping the dream alive at least for now in this series. <laughs> yeah, you guys can't kill Cassante. Um, <laughs> down will go to the Nexus. The DRX, they get the job done in about 45 minutes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That makes per everything about this graph makes sense. Look at Bulldog's Cause? tiny 45,000 damage bar. Yeah, because not doing any damage uh, pre that. Yep, of course. Teddy doing 80k in a 40 minute game. Sure. Yeah, that's fine. Bull didn't build Leandris, so obviously his damage not going to look very good. It worked, I, I guess, in game number one. They went for Bard, obviously, in the last game, but they had Malphite, so that's kind of the synergy between those two. So if you're going to go Cassante, maybe you go for something that has a bit more hard engage because you don't have the Malphite hard engage, and they go for the Rakan. Of course, in the lane, you kind of get poked out. Rakan just, like, presses Q and tries desperately to heal a Smolder. But guys, we're just about ready. Let's hop on to the Rift. But mathematically, the <laughs> win here mm. is all they need to keep it going. Here is that Teddy still has TP available, though. And unlike last game, he isn't really getting pummeled as much when it comes to the CS. Sponge going in. Yeah, Sponge hit that and decided to enter into the enemy jungle, which is a bit scary. It's now Bulldog flashing forward. He's going to miss everything. And so Sponge, without his own flash, goes back in and maybe going to convert this onto Bulldog, who will go down first blood over to Yehu. And Cuz will immediately follow up. It's a double kill for Yehu in the mid lane as they overextend and the Karmas and Jao show their power. And in these type of trades where Zinzo can just keep autoing, Plata knows. Or uh, Yehu knows rather yeah, that Yehu. it was actually to a detriment. Rascal, or uh, rather, Dudu, Rascal now playing Cassante, but that actually was a big problem. As all oh, the angle! Yeah, the angle, it is perfect. Delivered directly into the hands of the Xin Zhao. Dudu in a lot of trouble, but he does have his flash available, and he will actually be totally fine. Uh, did have to flash, but he gets away alive, at least. Sponge still hangs around. No. And Dudu's just gonna try to get a ward down. He does have another dash, but he might just die first, and. Uh, yeah, no, in fact, he doesn't have his dash, so he's just dead. Very unfortunate, big mistake there, as Spongy's like, well, I'll just hide on Bush and wait for him to face check me. How close they were to playoffs, but it was, I think, just one series win. Yeah, and then they just couldn't win. They went on a massive losing streak, and uh, we have level 6 here for Pleta, trying to get in onto Undil here, but again, it's Smolder with 50 stacks, so nice engage, but yeah, he didn't even have Ignite, so... He was going to land, and he gets pulled under the turret, knocked up immediately, because he's going to live, but by the skin of his teeth, doesn't necessarily have to be doing that. Sponge is looking. I don't think he, he is looking. Uh, it doesn't, does, doesn't. He's staring doesn't at them menacingly. It. Do they really want to fight this? And Quantum Freak's going to move in as a five-man unit. TP is available for a Rascal. 
They do want to go for this. TP does get utilized. It's now the Mountain Q there to slow them up. The massive flank comes in and everybody is just caught in the mob fire. And now Dudu all alone on the backside. Look at Teddy, he's just in the pit massacring people here as Bull desperate to get a kill, but it's a double for Teddy instead. And it's a near ace for DRX on the dragon. Let it happen. And it's going to be huge. I mean, in front of Drake, scaling, even on Karma, Jow, uh, even the... Okay, nice little setup here from Cuz. They should be able to get Yehu down, although the shield is pretty nice, and they will trade it one for one. Ooh, very close on that as well. Sponge still on the chase, but just going to clear the ward. Really big moment there as they do get. Oh boy, here comes Bomb as well, and now the Uri engages are really sticking as Teddy's able to get in there with the flash. Oh. That's another kill, just a straight up duo kill. And not much that Andal can do. He has consistently just gotten grand entrance on over and over and over. Plata has been. At 15 minutes. Here comes Rascal once again. He's not even going to utilize the Ghost, but he's taking a big trade as now the sweet spot is going to hit, though, and all of a sudden, maybe a trade back here from Dudu, but this Cassante with the red buff is getting on in there as now has to flash the knockup. A very close trade between these two top laners. The Bulldog. Ghost, the yeah. The where this guy even is, although Cuz trying to get in there, trying to stop him from backing, but he's under the turret. And the back goes off. <laughs> And they do not get him. And he's not just going to TP close. back. <laughs> he's like, yeah. TP advantage, though. Dudu can TP in. Rascal has to get there the old fashioned way. He is running. <laughs> Straight line. Well, he's kind of he's he's there now, though. He's lining it. And he's going to have a nice angle here, too. I mean, they will have to respect the Cassante. Oh, Dudu, no. Good war there from Plata. Yeah, that's going to spot Dudu here on the flank. DRX delaying this nicely. Just. A lot of damage, though, going into this Drake as Cuz trying to go for the steal, but a block on the Q, and there it goes, the way of DRX. Now the engage goes in onto that squishy frontliner as it's Bulldog, who's right in the front, immediately gets 100 to zeroed and does 300 damage in the fight, if you can call it that. Uh, DRX is kind of rolling over them now. That's not a fight, that's a beatdown! And I'm sure DRX will give it to us. Although, uh, Dudu, you do need to... We need to work with us there, man. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you're Profane Hydra. You're a real champion now. He is up a good 35 CS. Mm. Uh, they're trying to dive this again. They are going to stop the back. Q does land, but that's the channel tier from the side of Rascal. And with Pleta and Pleta's. Not another. We are only a single win away from playoffs. Fear's going to come in as Yehu gets turret aggro. Might not matter, though, as Bulldog is in a lot of trouble here. Mantra Q comes in, and now Teddy is going to be isolated, but he's got Pleta nearby, and he should be just fine because hanging around as well. Oh, uh, maybe Dudu. The flank of the ages. Ah, uh, he spotted out. Yep. Pleta sniffs it out, and now they want to collapse onto this one. Mama's going to be called down, and once again, Bulldog and Bull in the front line just getting burned away as the execute damage is about to come through. There it is. Teddy going to take down the first one. Bulldog also in a ton of trouble. And the front line from the side of DRX is huge. I mean, as in goes Cuz, but a very nice stasis here from Yehu. Will it matter? Looks like he might go down. Finally does. But unfortunately, I think that's the only kill that Hana will get as Pleta going to return to safety. Nice Q3 does come in from the side of the Aatrox, but it's not going to matter as the damage is way too high for DRX. And now it's 16 to 2 in kills. Freaks, they know they're so far ahead. And Guangdong have not been able to find a single angle in this game. As now they're trying to threaten here onto the Drake. Maybe Cuz steals it or something, but Dudu's not getting a flank now, and he's already chunked out. In goes Sponge, and Dudu's just running for his life as he will survive. And the front line here of DRX is getting chunked out quite a bit, but at the end of the day, it might just come down to Cuz. He is going to land the Q. He's going to land that Q, and he goes on in, and it's not stolen. It goes to Smolder. It uh, looked like that went one down. That one went down to about 25 health as well. And Teddy, legendary, 8 and 0, gets them another dragon. And DRX. Oh, TP flank. Yehu doesn't have TP. They don't know yet. Oh, seems like they have identified this. And Rascal going to stop the backs. And Cuz is just dead. He's out of the fight. Mob does an insane amount of damage into that back line. And Dudu, he's there. He's, he's trying to press his buttons, but he's just CC'd to death. And 
blown to smithereens by the baby dragon. And that should do it. DRX pushing in. They don't have the Baron buff anymore. They don't seem to care. I thought that death ball comp was Kwangdong. All the healing is coming through from DRX instead. The TP ward not going to lead to anything whatsoever. Sponge? Yeah, he's going on in there. And again, he doesn't even, he doesn't even necessarily have to, but any space you create for this gigantic little baby dragon, uh, it, it will be enough. And Cuz is not going to take that Q. I don't think I've seen in the LCK a smolder with Infernal Soul yet. I don't believe so. And I, I can't wait. Sponge? No, he doesn't care. Bit. He's uh -oh. got a Karma right behind him. And uh, nice Encore. It's going to delay the inevitable engage as everybody is just going to be executed eventually. As Blood of Dig Dig get one of the kills, so it's not going to be a Penta, but it should be a 2-0 here for DRX as everybody is exploding with the Cinders as well. You see Bulldog's face. Nobody is happy on the side of Kwangdom Freaks. DRX absolutely pummeling them tonight. As you and I, Chronicler, we got two Omega sweeps, 2-0. Nothing to see here actually today. Very one-sided day, and DRX very well deserved. <laughs> They're having a very nice uh, little celebration there at the end as well. 2-0 as DRX will take the big win today. Chance, it's not going to be easy, but who knows? <laughs> <laughs> all right, that, if that doesn't win celebration of the week, maybe it's all him. Maybe he's just the vibes guy. That's he what is. they needed. Well, he's obviously very outspoken, as we can <laughs> tell um, in these in these rundowns of the player comms. A steady once again above 1k DPM, not too surprising uh, with a game like this. So no elimination yet. DRX are still in it, and so are Bro. Nobody's em eliminated from playoffs with this victory of DRX 2-0 over Quantum Freaks tonight. Thank you very much. This is Deer for the POG interview translation, joined by Rascal and Sponge of the side of DRX. Congratulations! So you guys are able to continue your playoff streams. How do you feel? I'm so happy that we're able to get a 2-0, a clean victory today. And given that we still have a chance to make it to the playoffs, I believe that we will work even harder and uh, be on top of our form. And it looks like we saw your victory ceremony and we want to know what the meaning behind it is. When I came up with it, it's, it was because uh, it's kind of to reenact how bright the the lighting is, and I believe that this was actually something that I referenced from Faker and his ad, where he says, "Can you turn off the light?" So I think. That's just something fun that I came up with. And Rascal, so you guys were on the verge of being eliminated from the playoffs today, so what mindset did you enter the match with? We had a lot of thoughts, um, and we definitely try to consider what we can do to finish strong in this season. So I think I was, I'm was. i just really glad that we we're able to show up and show display a better performance today. And Sponge? I feel like I came to stage today thinking I have nothing to lose. And Rascal, in game one, you got your second consecutive Malphite POG. And this pick is actually unique to you this spring. So what kind of compositional synergy were you looking for? So Malphite as a pick against Kasante does pretty well during the laning phase. Since he is able to execute such strong engages, I think that's something that actually works really well with our bot lane. I think we can definitely rely a lot on this pick in terms of damage output as well. And cop-wise, it looked like maybe the damage could be low overall, which could put more weight on the smolder's shoulders. 
So what was the plan to overcome this issue at top, at, in the bottom lane? So Smother is a really good champion when it comes to scaling, but that process of scaling is really difficult. Teddy is just a really good player though, so as long as he scales, he's able to carry the game. And at around 16 minutes, you had an insane flank TP play, and there was actually a similar moment in game 2. So how do you usually catch these TP angles? Like in both games 1 and 2, whenever we have control over the game, and Plata also had really good vision coverage, but I think that's why I was able to execute these TPs very well. And yeah, you with you allowing the Smolder to scale, you took a clean win in Game 1, and Game 2 seemed to show similar matchups. So what warranted the changes in Draft in Game 2? Lunge? To be honest, when it comes to draft, I don't really understand too well, but I just have my full faith in my coaching staff. I can't really explain what the thought process behind that is. Rascal, what about you? Any word? Was there any part in game 2 in terms of the draft that you could improve? We didn't really intend to fix our draft too much, but since the enemy top picked Aatrox, I think that's what actually got us to tweak our draft a little bit. And Sponge, in games 1 and 2, you played Sin Zhao, and so this has been a more common pick lately. How would you rate him? Usually, I don't really play him, but today... I think we saw a really good opening to play him. It was just very suitable for the type of comp that we're going for. And in the early phase of game 2, we caught you juking Hui's skills at Zin Zhao, so... How did you do that? To be honest, uh, there are a lot of moments that I just use Flash to juke. I don't think it really has to do anything with Sin Zhao specifically. And I feel like I was just really lucky to win the game with Sin Zhao today as well. And so your team chemistry was on point. There were so many clean team fights. Sponge, what's, what happened to the team? Any good thing happened to the team lately? I feel like our practice process really went well. And I feel like our team fights were a lot easier because of the draft today. And Rascal, you've been playing with Yehu lately. And from the mic check, we could tell how wholesome and happy the team is. So how is the synergy with Yehu? Regarding the team chemistry, I guess aside from that, Yehu is filling a lot of really important role in our team. So in-game wise, he makes a lot of shot calls, and even outside of the game, he keeps the team spirit up, so I'm very, very grateful for him. And so today, with game 1, Teddy has reached 600 total LCK games. Please congratulate him. Rascal? Congratulations on your 600th match or a game played and I'm really happy that I was able to be with you um, and play alongside with you on this special day. And I hope that we are able to win even more games in the future so that we can be happy together and fun. Teddy, congratulations! I'm just so thankful that I'm able to play alongside with you on this special day and I hope that we have even brighter days in the future. Now it's time for DRX to increase their playoffs chances. Your next match against VRX will be crucial, so what is your re resolution? So for VRX, we definitely have to win against them to make it to the playoffs. 
I believe we are able to win against them as long as we put in a lot of effort into practice and preparation. Rascal, any message to your teammates as the older brother figure? Thank you so much, always. Let's do our best in the remaining matches. Fighting! And this will be the end of the interview and back to the space.